What's good, everybody? It's your boy Nate Biggs. Nate L. You already know. Holding it down. You feel me? You know, back with another one out here. Each one, teach one. is a principle. All is one. All is well. You know how we do. So today we're going to be talking about honor. Right? We're going to talk about what it means to be honorable and what it means to be loyal. And what fear is. Right? And what we all go through in fear. So, honor is trust. In the ancient times, it was all based on trust. It was based that, you know, people out there could trust each other on being good with each other. And they had tribes, you know, tribes had chiefs that led them, kings that led them, right? Two tribes came together, they formed a nation, right? Based on same beliefs and cultures and customs, right? And they had different orders. You had your priest class, who were your shamans, who were the seers into the spiritual world, as well as you had your military, your soldiers, your knights, right? Your clans, your warriors. The warriors, they dealt with the defense of the people, right? And it was all about, you know, protecting the women, children, and your nation, right? And your kingdom, you know? And so things of honor was based on trust. And, you know, one of the ancient tribes, or I should say ancient clans, because that's another way of saying tribe, clan, you know, posse, clique, uh, you know, crew, whatever, known as the samurai. They dealt with everything based on honor and dishonor, right? So, everybody during the culture, the samurai culture, and the knights also, they all carry swords, right? Let's check, take a look at that. Right there, that symbol in that sign right there is the sign of the I Ching, right? The Chinese I Ching, which is also, you know, the signs of the Tao, T-A-O, right? Which deal with, you know what I mean? All the symbolism is of nature. This one right here stands for fire and water coming through to completion of heaven and earth. Um, also coming from, you know, the sign of the clan, the ninja clan and G.I. Joe, the Arish Kakage, that Snake Eyes and Storm Shadows is part of. Uh, they put that right there. Everybody go do your research on that so you can learn about honor, right? You can learn about peace inside and how to build yourself, you know? Through the different martial arts and the um, different ways of self-defense because it's not about trying to take... You know what I mean? Control of other people. It's about, you know, having a balance to where you can defend yourself and you can defend their right to preserve, which is the first law, the law of self-preservation, which is natural law, which is based on love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, right? That leads to equality, right? So everything is balanced and everything is always kept at a hum humble pace, right? But what happened is when you had different kingdoms that came in rose and fell, they always rose and fell because they seek too much power, which is imbalance, right? I want everybody to go and research a man by the name of uh, Sun Tzu. He wrote a book called The Art of War. The thing about The Art of War it dealt with understanding human consciousness and what we call human behavioral patterns of cognitive uh, knowledge and how to, you know, respond to it based on controlling, you know, oneself as well as having the enemy defeat himself without even fighting that enemy who, you know, <clears throat> having that enemy doubt himself through fear. Right, and I want y'all to also go pick up this book. Everybody should know this book right here. It's a powerful one. It's called The Forty Eight Laws of Power by Robert Greene. It also builds off of uh, Sun Tzu as well. You know what I mean? But it's all about you know understanding about how power and the dynamics of power have led to you know corruption, you know dishonor, you know. But in the past, everything was based on honor. Like I said, samurais, ninjas, <clears throat> knights, you know, and different warriors of different tribes. They always carried around, you know, their weapon of choice, you know, samurai swords, you know, in the Old West, people had guns, you know, but everything was balanced. Even in the Old West, you know, when people had a showdown in the OK Corral, you know what I mean, the sundown, you would have a sheriff, a mediator there, someone that would always make sure that everything was balanced. Just like you have MMA fights today, you have a uh, referee, you know what I'm saying? Just like you have a football game, basketball game, you got a referee. You got always somebody who's a mediator that walks the middle path. What I'm trying to say is the best way to always keep on is to walk the middle path. It's to never get out of line, you know what I'm saying, with the balance of nature. Because if that, you always got to pay back the price through karma. Now, let's talk about what fear is, because fear is what leads to the imbalance of men trying to control others or trying to control resources and never feel like they have enough, which leads to greed, right? The greed and the, uh, what we call the seven deadly sins. I'm going to try to go look that up too, right? <clears throat> the key in life is, you know what I'm saying, balance. And everything we do, the reason why we even walking around breathing and we, you know, feel good about ourselves is because we have balance. When we have a disease in the body, it's because our body is imbalanced, right? 
And so these balances in the force of nature deals with positive and negative energy, right? In the Chinese I Ching, the Tao, the symbol of the Tao, also known as the Ankh right here, right? You will see the I Ching or you will see the Tao symbol and you will see the yin yang principle, right? The yin yang principle, right? I'll let everybody take a look at that. The yin yang principle was always based on balance. You know, the feminine, the masculine, all coming together to be one whole. And that's what we are made out of, our mothers and our fathers, all coming together to be a whole body of wholeness and peace and truth and love and, um, you know, life. So the key in life, you know what I mean, is balance and honor. But with fear, which um, <clears throat> the acronym that I've been taught and learned, and um, I learned from people in the conscious community, um, F-E-A-R is false evidence appearing real, right? We fear things that we don't know, and we fear things that we don't understand. So in order to try to control them or things outside of ourselves, we try to dominate them with power. And that's where the imbalance leads. That's where chaos is. The real order out of chaos is controlling yourself. Self-control, self-determination, and self-knowledge. It leads to honor, and it leads to always having trust. So like I said, honor and trust is the key to life. Trust in yourself first, and then you can trust your fellow man. And by all means, we all have to walk the path that we're walking. And we should also look at the ancient books to the prophets out there, and especially to the master teachers that came before us, like, you know, Iman Isa, or what we would call Yeshua the Christ, Jesus the Christ. He walked in the middle path, and he walked with, he walked with honor. And his whole purpose was the golden rule. The golden rule was do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And better yet, why don't you do unto others as you would have them wanting to be done too? And they will do and treat you the way that you want to be treated by letting them know and always keeping balance and justice and honor. Because that's all that matters in life is keeping honor, keeping peace in our hearts, love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality. So everybody, thank you very much for your time. I care about y'all deeply. All is one, all is well. Catch you on the next ride. Take care, please.